Al Ocean, my friends, the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. and Gracie Allen with Frank Parker, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. A hundred million pounds, that's why you can't go wrong. Vote for Gracie, he's voting all day long. And now I bring you George Burns and our little candidate who has a song in her heart and a kangaroo in a dressing room, Heinz Honey, Gracie Allen. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Hello. Well, Gracie, how's your campaign coming along? Oh, it's been keeping me so busy, I haven't had time to think about it. Your campaign's been keeping you so busy, huh? Well, no, the trouble at home. The maid walked in last night and caught my aunt kissing my uncle. The maid caught your uh, uncle kissing your aunt? Yeah, it was her day off. They didn't expect her home so soon. Well, uh, what happened? What happened? The maid said to my aunt, one of us will have to go. <laughs> so? So the maid left. Oh, good, good, good. And my uncle left with her. <laughs> Your uncle left with her? Yeah, well, what did he have to lose? It was downhill anyway. <laughs> what did your aunt do? Oh, what could she do? She went to see a picture with the butler. <laughs> with the butler? Well, you see, the gardener had already seen the picture. <laughs> Look, while this was going on, what was the chauffeur doing? Well, he was in Reno getting a divorce from the maid. <laughs> nice little family you got there. Hello. Oh, hello, Frank. Hello, Pinky. Oh, I'll never forget how my uncle met my aunt. She went in Bullock to buy a girdle, and he sold her a lawnmower. <laughs> Must have been a beautiful romance. Oh, it was love at first sight. She had never seen a lawnmower before. <laughs> well, those things are pretty rare. Yes. But did she ever buy the girdle? Oh, of course. And when she wears it, she's got a lot of class. She has, huh? Yeah, it sticks out all over her. <laughs> Yeah, she's probably got her good point. Yeah. Oh, that's good, Judge. Like it, huh? <laughs> Say, Gracie, when you're elected and I'm Postmaster General, I've got a great idea to simplify the Postal Service. You have? Sure, I'm going to put my picture on all the stamps. That'll make telegrams very popular. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> Stand by the expression on my face, you'll be able to tell what's in the letter before you open it. Oh, well, give me a for instance. Yeah, give her a for instance. Well, well, now, look, if the stamp shows a picture of me smiling, yeah. it's a love letter. Mm. And if I'm crying, it's a bill. Mm. If it shows me winking, I met a new girl. And if it shows me with both eyes closed, ha, <laughs> ha, I met a husband. <laughs> you know, Frank, my fa... <laughs> Pardon me. Hello? Gesundheit. Thanks. Say, that staff idea is great, Frank. Suppose I want to write a letter and tell people how to make rough red hands soft, smooth, and white. What would I use? A two-cent stamp. I'd use Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Yeah. You know, I'd give my right arm to have somebody say something sensible on this program. George, old man, would you give your left arm? <laughs> Why my left arm? I've got a right arm. <laughs> you, you had a head, you could scratch it. Maybe we're better off talking about my aunt and uncle, huh? Gracie, will you stop with your aunt and uncle? Well, I can't. They're stopping with us. Well, we're back, folks. Oh, but I'll never forget their honeymoon. They went to Niagara Falls and stopped at this lovely hotel. Well, that's it. And after a wonderful champagne dinner or two, yes. at about uh, 11 o'clock, after everybody was asleep, uh -huh. my uncle went over the falls in a barrel. <laughs> Gracie, that uncle that went over the falls in the barrel, is that on your father's side? No, it was on the Canadian side. <laughs> and you're a little on the nutty side. Oh, George. Oh, yes. I say, Gracie, I've been reading a lot about these pocket battleships and the Secretary of the Navy. I think they're absolutely absurd. Why, Ray? Well, I think it's jolly difficult for a sailor to swim with a battleship in his pocket. <laughs> well, Ray, you can always put a zipper on it and it won't fall out. That's right. There's an idea. Yes. Oh, and when the fleet is out at sea, I'm going to put Venetian blinds on the portholes. <laughs> Venetian blinds, huh? Yes, those peeping toms are quite annoying, old boy. <clears throat> say, Ray, why don't you have my party emblem, the kangaroo, tattooed on all the sailors' chests? I say, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, then they can keep their tobacco in the pouch. <laughs> <laughs> say, a thing like that, kangaroo, 
up to be a fag. <laughs> oh, 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 that's oh. Good. How do you like that, Frank? <laughs> Curly hair. Curly hair? It kinks. It does, Al. Uh, <laughs> and Ray, Ray, when you're Secretary of the Navy, I'm going to make my uncle your first assistant sailor. First assistant sailor. Well, why not? His middle name is Yacht. Yacht, that's a pretty yeah, name. Well, we only call him Yacht for short. His whole name is Idiot. Oh, Idiot. <laughs> that's the one that eloped with the maid. Yes. Mm. Gracie, we can't allow your uncle on my ship if he has that maid with him. It's against naval regulations. Well, what do you want me to do, eh? Just send the maid down alone. Oh. Gracie, stop giving out jobs. You know nothing about politics. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. What would you do if a senator tried to filibuster? Well, I'd give him bicarbonate soda. Well, I'm sorry I brought it up. President, you don't even know what the amendments are. Yeah, which one? Anyone. The 14th. You mean the one about not abridging citizenship rights? Well, is that the... Yeah, that's it. it oh, well, the gist of that amendment is no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Well... Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. That's amazing. Nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protections of the laws. Proposed June 13, 1868. Adopted July 21, 1868. Ratified by July 28, 1868. Oh, Gracie, how did you happen to know all of that? Oh, I just took a wild guess. A wild guess, huh? <laughs> If your hands are chapped and sandpapery from all this raw, stinging March wind, then here's a smart tip. Keep a bottle of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream in your coat closet. Smooth Heinz on your hands and face always before you go outdoors and again when you come inside. Heinz is a grand help against chapping. It's extra creamy, extra softening, and contains two vitamins, A and D. Every creamy drop of Heinz feels good and soothing to tender skin. And that reminds me, you know how hard children work at their play. They get outdoors these days to roller skate or play games and their tender little hands and knees get so rough and chapped. See that they smooth Heinz on face, hands, and knees to help keep their skin smooth and comfortable. Men enjoy Heinz as an after-shaving lotion, too. It works swell with electric shavers. Not sticky, just feels soothing and refreshing to sensitive skin. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at the nearest toilet goods counter. It comes in 10, 25, 50 cent, and dollar sizes. Start using Heinz Honey and Almond Cream tonight for softer, smoother skin. Now, Frank Parker. Thanks, Prue. From the musical play, Walk a Little Faster, we find a typical topical song entitled April in Paris by Vernon Duke. April in Paris, chestnuts in blossom, holiday tables under the tree.
Frank, that was grand. I never heard you in better voice. Well, nice of you to say that. Well, you know, you seem to be getting better each week. Really? Do you mean it? Well, if I didn't Frank, mean it, I wouldn't Frank, say it. Frank, Frank, I was a... Frank, you're, t uh, you're, uh, you're talking to yourself. Well, it's the only way I can get an intelligent answer on this program. <laughs> you know, you're certainly stuck on you, and I do mean glue. Mm -hmm. The feeling is mucilage. Oh, get out of there. <laughs> Take it. Hello, this is Tyne Sonny, also known as Gracie Allen, presidential candidate on surprise party ticket holders in our convention in Omaha, May 15, 16, 17, 18. Who's calling, please? <laughs> oh, just a minute. I'll see if she's in. Gracie, it's for you. You're Gracie. Oh, I am. <laughs> see what you started, Frank? Hello? Who? Oh, hello, Andy. I didn't recognize my voice. What? What? Talk louder. Where are you talking from? Well, you better go in the other room where the phone is. <laughs> George, my aunt is so very silly. You'd never know it. Hello? Oh, hello, Andy. That's much better. Our uncle and the maid back? Oh, you are. Oh, that's good. That's bad. That's good. No, that's bad. That's bad. That's good. That's bad. That's good. Gracie. That's good. Gracie. That's good. Gracie. That's bad. Gracie. What's going on there? Oh, my aunt is sorting a box of strawberries. That's good. Yeah. That's bad. Give me that phone. Goodbye. I wish your relatives would stop calling. Oh, hello, Bubbles. Hello, Bubbles. Oh, Bubbles. oh, hello. How do you feel, Mr. Burns? Well, how do I look? Maybe it's something you ate. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I feel just as young as Georgie just like. <laughs> Hey, that's right. I read that. Say, is it true that Jeff was going to marry a 15-year-old girl? Said so in the papers. Oh, well, maybe he's marrying her for her money. Yes. <laughs> Either that or she's a swell cook. Yes. <laughs> Say, Frank, did you know they're each bringing a school chum to act as best man and maid of honor? Really? Yes. She's bringing Shirley Temple and he's bringing George Alice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And if, uh, if, you know, I'll tell you something. If she marries Jessel, she couldn't marry a nicer fella. Well, you're perfectly right. You know, he proposed to me about 32 years ago. Really? Uh, what did you say? Da, da. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a picture in the paper, and she's certainly a beautiful young girl. Oh, she certainly is. Mm. And you know, she comes from a very young family. Her grandmother's only 19. 19? And her father isn't born yet. Isn't born yet? That's what it said in the New York papers. They're expecting him to arrive any day now. Yeah, that's what Dr. Kildare keeps telling them down at the office. Uh -huh. I don't know what the papers are so upset about. When she's 92, he'll only be 147. Well, that's nice. Then they can grow old together. Now, you take my drummer. When he was 55, he married a girl of 14. How did that happen? Jessel was out of town. <laughs> yeah, probably playing Lowe's Afghanistan. <laughs> George, we'll have to send the bride and groom a nice present. Yeah, something they can both use. Yeah. Ha, huh, how about a lollipop with a cigar on the other end? <laughs> well, I don't know. The difference between 50 and 40 is only 25. That's not so much. No. If it is, George, you can always get the 10 cent size. That's, well, who said that? Or if that's too little, get the 50 cent size. And then, of course, there's always the dollar size. Of what? You know, that soothing stuff that you can get at all toilet discounters. Yeah, but what is it? You know, it comes in bottles. Yeah, but what is it? Oh, George, you made me say it. Hi, it's Honey and Almond. Yeah, I forced you. I forced you. <laughs> say, Gracie, do you know that 25,000 members of the Whiskerina Club in Omaha have passed the rule that all men have got to have whiskers to come to your convention? 25,000 sets of whiskers? Uh -huh. Oh, that ought to sweep me into office. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't like the idea of a beard, but it might grow on me. Oh, <laughs> oh George, that's a scream. <laughs> yes, I'm another Boris Carlo. Yeah. <laughs> You know, George, uh, a beard would be very becoming to you. Well, thanks. You look like a Nairdale peeping through a hedge. <laughs> uh, what's the matter with my face? George, do you shave yourself? Certainly. Do you ever cut yourself? No. Isn't it a temptation? Gracie, <laughs> <laughs> I still can't see why we have to all have beards to go to your convention. Well, that's my slogan. Vote for Gracie and see America fuzz. America fuzz. <laughs> and Gracie, you know, your campaign mail is pouring in. Now, here's a letter from the engineers of the Colorado State College at Fort Collins. 
And at their annual banquet on March 23rd, they endorse you for president. Oh, am I honored. And Indiana University has also endorsed you. Oh, am I thrilled. And the Miami University in, my, in Florida has endorsed you. Am I pale? Pale? Yeah, from being endorsed too much. <laughs> well, how do you like that, Frank? Garbo's feet. Garbo's feet? Plenty of socks. <laughs> I certainly put my foot in that. Oh, George, yes, you I'm the oh, devil. Oh, 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 devil. Oh, 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 this is wonderful. 4,000 students at San Jose State College are holding a Gracie Allen Ball on March 29th. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I'll be able to dance 4,000 times. You mean you're going to dance with 4,000 college boys? Sure. Isn't that pretty strenuous? Well, not as strenuous as sitting them out, if you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, Gracie, in raising this beard for your convention now, uh, how often do I have to water it? Well, um, a convention should be watered once a month. Well, that's a nice piece of dialogue. Well, Gracie, I'll raise half a beard, and if the people in Omaha like it, well, I'll raise the other half. Yes. Well, that's fair Do that enough. and go and talk to Austin Wells. And, Gracie, did you know that the Delta chapter of the Phi Kappa Sigma at Washington and Jefferson College is nominating you for president April 27th at their quadrennial convention. At their quadrennial convention? Uh -huh. Isn't that wonderful? I didn't even know quadrennials were in season. Gracie, do you know what quadrennial means? Quadrennials, let's see. It's, um... Uh, How do you spell quadrennial? Uh, very poorly. It's a sort of, um, bluish white, more like a green. Sort of like a circle. Yeah, and, and the more you shave it, the longer it grows, and the longer it grows, the come shorter on, it gets, and the shorter on, it gets, the longer come it's on, quadrennial. Come on, Gracie, I... That was simply hey, grand, Gracie, you know. the newspapers all over the country are waiting for your party platform. Oh, yes, I was working on it last night, and I'll read what I've written. <clears throat> the text of the surprise party platform is outlined by candidate Gracie Allen. Plank number one, unemployment and where to get it. <laughs> unemployment and where to get it? Uh, you, no, please, Judge, I thought of it first. Yes, that's yours. 
Under my administration, the government will give free correspondence courses so that people who can't find jobs in their own line will soon be without jobs in three or four different types of work. <laughs> well, that's nice work if you can't get it. Uh, for instance, yes. I'll teach people to milk cows by mail. By mail? How to raise mushrooms under twin beds. Oh, that's amazing. How to get good bridge hands when it's your deal. Well, you must be elected. 200 things to do with an old toupee, and so forth. Well, that's not a platform, that's a laundry shoe. Now, George, I'm reading. Oh, yes. I'll even give a home course in barbering if I can get Montana to cooperate. Well, I'll talk to him. My plan is to send each student barber a live sheep and a razor. <laughs> That's a lovely plan. Then when he's learned to shave the sheep, he can write his own diploma on the sheep's back. <laughs> Where does he learn to write? No, please. Oh, you're coming to that. Uh, this is better than having a sheepskin in a picture frame, because with a live sheep hanging on his wall, a barber will have something to wipe his hands on. Well, that's not bad. No. <laughs> now, plank number two. Yes. It's uh, based on a moral. A moral. Moral. To prevent wrinkles, hang your face up at night. You don't wear your pants to bed, do you? Well, that's just what this country needs. Of course. Mm. And it's uh, covered under this heading. My plan for sociable security. Sociable security? Yes. To uh, be secure sociably, stay away from society. Say, that's good. It's terrific. Uh, dinner parties are getting so risky that even if you find the right soup spoon, you're still puzzled. You don't know which fork to pick it up with. <laughs> That's why they put pencils on the end of a racer. George, do you want to hear this or don't you? I don't. Well, then listen. Mm. <laughs> there are more rules of etiquette than traffic laws. For instance, if a gentleman is lying under a table in a nightclub, should he rise if a lady comes in? No, just tip his ice bag. And, uh, and say, how do? Yes. yes. <laughs> and, how do? Uh, <laughs> yes. George, and what should a girl do after a gentleman brings her home from a cafe? Should she ask him in to meet her husband? Well, should she? Well, that's the Republicans answer that. Mm. <laughs> Rishi, I'd like to ask you one thing. What does your surprise party stand for? Well, because it would look silly lying down. <clears throat> well, Plank number not. three. You Which know, I the... don't think social security is any problem at all. All you have to do is have trousers come with two pairs of suspenders. Yeah, and that could hold up the budget at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gracie, in your platform, aren't you going to say anything about finances? Finances, I certainly am. I think every girl should have one. <laughs> one? Frank Parker has three. I have four. Four sweethearts? Who are they? Don Wilson. <laughs> yeah, that male quartet with six delicious flavors. And now for prank number three, which is also based on a moral. What's the idea of all these morals? Well, they're mostly to fill the cracks between the planks. Mm. So that it matches your head. Mm -hmm. Thought so, yes. Just a minute, let's take it. Hello. Hello, you remember me, Charlie Henderson, the fellow who wrote the campaign song? Oh, yes. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Mr. Henderson. <laughs> uh, you're Mr. Henderson, and what is it you want? I want to talk to Charlie. Look, uh, I'm George Burns. Oh, wait, I'll see if he's in. Here, Gracie, you talk to him. I'm going nuts. Oh, hello, Charlie. Hello, Gracie. Well, look, I'll be a trifle late. On my way to meet you, I got on a one-way street, and it took me a little out of my way. Well, where are you? In Salt Lake City. <laughs> well, don't worry. Instead of an 8.30 dinner, we'll make it 8.45. Goodbye. Bye. He came down to meet you here, and he's in Salt Lake City? Well, you see, he washed his car this morning. He can't do a thing with it. <laughs> Well, he ought to trade it in for a rattle. Uh, plank number three. Bigger figures for small businessmen. Bigger figures for small businessmen. That's to keep their bustles out of the red, I guess. Yes. Yes. Uh, chicken in every pot is fine if you're not the chicken. I see. But what this country needs is a pretty girl on every lap. Say, you've got something there. Sure. Idle knees are the root of all evil. Idle knees? Plank nice. number four. Hello, Gracie. Oh, hello, Charlie. Do you mean to say you came all the way from Salt Lake City in two minutes? I would have been here sooner, only I had an accident. An accident? I went through the windshield. Atta boy. Please, don't pat me on the back. My head keeps falling off. <laughs> well, I've had enough of this. Plank number four, immortality. And I've had enough of that, too. I've enough of these things. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. She's the best little skipper in the land. Vote for Gracie. 
work a great big Won't you please give this little girl a hand? Even big politicians don't know what to do. Gracie doesn't know he's out, but neither do you. So vote for Gracie to win the presidential race. A hundred million strong. That's right, you can't go wrong. Vote for Gracie. If there's anything that you want done, just tell me all about it now, and you'll get it done and how. Clap hands, here comes Parker. Clap hands, here comes Parker. When I watch Mel go down the chute, I will need a vocal substitute. So tell whomever it concerns to hereby delegate to Georgie Burns. Clap hands, here comes Noble. Clap hands, here comes Noble. I've been thinking for some time that Congress ought to talk in rhyme. It seems quite silly, I suppose, but I get awfully bored with prose. Clap hands, here comes bubble. Clap hands, here comes bubble. Now listen, and I'll state my case. The thing that I need most is space. Instead of good five-cent cigars, I want wider Pullman cars. Clap hands, here comes Bradley. Clap hands. I tell those folks down in Washington that washing dishes isn't fun. But still your hands can be a dream. Just use Heinz honey and almond cream. Clap hands, here comes Georgie. Clap hands, here comes Georgie. Now, I don't like to be a pest, but I have just one small request. If you should entertain a king, I want the king to hear me sing, Oh, eight beers to haven all by myself. Eight beers to haven. She's the best little bet you've ever had. If you grow gray with Gracie, you'll be glad. Oh, and speaking of gray, have you heard that it's true? Gracie favors the red and the white and the blue. So vote for Gracie to win the presidential race. A hundred million strong. That's right, you can't go wrong. Send for your copy of Gracie's campaign song, Vote for Gracie, a song the whole country is humming. You get the sheet music, including the words, of Vote for Gracie. The tune and the verses are grand for those evenings of fun around the piano. Just write your name and address on the back of a Heinz honey and almond cream carton. The 25, 50 cent or dollar size or send two 10-cent Heinz cartons to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California. In a few days, you receive your copy of Gracie's campaign song, Vote for Gracie. There's a picture of Gracie on the cover, too, and let me tell you she's a honey. Now act quickly. This offer is for a short time only. Send your name and address tonight on a Heinz carton. Mail your envelope to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California, and use your Heinz honey and almond cream every day to help keep your hands soft and pretty in spite of housework. Heinz is extra creamy, extra softening, and contains two vitamins, A and D. Every drop of this creamy emulsion goes right to work, easing away that dry, rough, chapped look, helping your hands to stay soft, sweet, and kissable. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at the nearest toilet goods counter. Treat your hands to the soothing comfort of Heinz tonight and send the Heinz carton for your copy of Gracie's campaign song now while the getting is good. Address your carton to Gracie Allen, Hollywood, California. Good night. Good night. What a good hand cream. Try the new Heinz hand cream in jars. It's made with the makers of Heinz honey and almond cream. And like this famous creamy lotion, Heinz hand cream is quick softening for chapped rough hands. In two sizes, 10 cents and 39 cents each at toilet goods counters. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>